Today we are rebuilding in five years Southampton using the youth to gold method. It's not going to be easy, is it? No. Now, Southampton are quite known anyway for using a lot of youngsters and bringing youngsters through. So we are going to be doing the youth to gold method, but we're not being as strict as what we would on, say, for a series or a stream that I would do youth to gold because it's a rebuild. And it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So we're well, tweaking you, it slightly. If you look at their prehistory as well, they, they bring through quite a few youngsters that have been gone on and done better things. I mean, you're looking at my favourite struggle, Alan Shearer, yep. Gareth Bale was at the World Cup. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, they, they do bring through some good, excellent players themselves, really. So, absolutely. I hope they've got some on the team there, haven't they? Yeah. So, the youth to go method that we are going to be using is we are going to be very strict with a transfer, only 21 years of age and younger. Of course, when I do youth to go, it's usually 19 and younger, but we're only doing a five year rebuild. So, we need the players to be kind of match ready already. So, I'm up in that age a little bit. Yeah. But I will be open to selling players if a good enough bid comes in instead of kind of hoarding them like I usually would during a rebuild and we're going to see how much success we can get through a youth to gold method in just five years with yeah. Southampton. A club that I think, Dad, are a bit of a selling club. Well, they, they proved that over the years as well, haven't they? Like, I might just put Gareth Bale as one player we definitely yeah. sold on once he got to a certain stage. Almost ruined his career and went mm -hmm. to Spurs, but no, he salvaged <laughs> it. He went to Madrid to play some golf instead. And then you've got Virgil van Dijk as well. Yeah. Really good player. Started, started getting to that sort of that top professional then in comes Liverpool yeah they sell him again so and Sadio Mane was exactly Sadio the same Sadio Mane yeah I mean then um, good interesting fact about him do you know what he's a record that he set while he was playing for um Southampton I don't know no 2014 season last game of the season they beat Aston Villa 6-1 he scored an hat trick ah. the quickest hat trick in the Premier League I remember it happening 176 seconds that is that is crazy oh. That is crazy. So, Brilliant. yeah, and he went on. He's done all right for himself as well, hasn't oh, he? Yeah, I mean, never player has gone to the World Cup. Yeah, so Champions player. League winner, yeah. Premier League winner, and yeah. now obviously off to Bayern Munich and kind of been there. Well, they, I think he's basically playing up front for them at the minute because yeah. they don't really have a striker. So, yeah, and they obviously got, they got in from Salzburg, if I remember correctly, and that is kind of another club like Southampton, focuses on buying young players yeah. and developing them to then sell them on for a hefty profit. But the only difference is Salzburg in a league where they are the best team doing that because they are a smaller league. I mean, to be honest with you, the over the years, you can't blame Southampton for doing that now because a few years ago, I can remember when they nearly folded. They went into administration, so yeah. they were very close to sort of folding completely. So you don't blame them now for if they've got a good asset on their on their, on their their books to make the most of it really when they can, when the money's no, there. Exactly, because financially not the best club. And you can see here, we have a balance of just £12 million in the Premier League, which is not a lot. We did have a budget of £20 million. We have spent that. But I actually want to highlight the transfer window that uh, Southampton have had because, I mean, there's three players here, just for a ma four players from just Man City alone that they have signed. So they've yeah. completely raided Manchester City. Uh, Romeo Lavia looks fantastic. Another team of a good youth set up, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Probably 18 years of age. Do you think? Oh, at this present moment, I would say the best in the country. They're bringing through some good players, yeah. aren't they? Uh, I think Chelsea kind of rivals it, but Chelsea just don't use them. I think Chelsea, That's the trouble. I think Chelsea just go out and buy all these youngsters, and they've got their. They, I mean, you know, at the beginning of every season, they, they, this sort of thing comes out that it says where all the players have gone. Yeah. And Chelsea have got like 100 players loaned out. Yeah, they? they're loaning out. Like so, 60 plus, aren't yeah. they? So, Edozi is another one, um, which I don't actually know about. But Bazunu, I do, the Irish goalkeeper. He looks like he's quite good and Juan Larios at left back as well. So that's another one. They've got a couple of players uh, that I like. Armel, uh, Armel Belakotchap, who's a bit of a football manager, won a kid the last couple of years. Looks really good in real life too. And Seiko Mara is another one they got from Bordeaux, who obviously got relegated two divisions because of financial troubles themselves. Yeah. They still spent £9.5 million on him though, but he does look a very good Striker yeah. in real life and on the game too. But I have signed two players at the start of this season and one of them is Andre. So we can see here, he is a centre defensive midfielder. They lost Romeo across the summer. And I don't really think Lavia might not be the the idea to, to just chuck him straight in now. He's no. only 18. Yeah. So maybe give another player uh, some responsibility in that role. And I think Andre is our man. He is 21 years of age. So he is the highest age that we can potentially sign. Uh, we got him from Fluminense and he got himself a work permit. 20 million pounds is what he costs us. So a little bit on the pricey side. Yeah. but. 
We're going to have to pay that if we want players of good potential who are good right now as well. Nagalo is the second player that I got from Norgeland. That club, again, that I mentioned on the last rebuild. Go to Norgeland, sign their players. They're very good. Nagalo is a centre-back that I picked up who can play right back, left back, or centre midfield, centre defence midfield. Uh, but he has fantastic player traits and a good current ability only 19 3.5 million pound and he's starting some games for us already so i think we're actually in a in a good stead here yeah. building uh quite a very young team theo walcott i have sold him by the way um remember when theo walcott come through the youth academy yeah. at southampton and then obviously moved to arsenal there's a lot of people talk about him uh but he is not very good anymore, so I got rid of him. <laughs> uh, and now he's 33. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's hard to believe, isn't it? I remember when he was come for as a 16-year-old. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, tactically then, with this Southampton team, I think this season is all about survival, well, like it is in real yeah, life. Don't try and stay in the Premier League. Yeah. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, so I've built this Southampton 4-3-3, kind of. <laughs> um, because, obviously, 4-3-3, usually you'd have the strikers, but we got shadow strikers because... We don't really have all the strikers, but we've got the likes of Joe Aribo, uh, Stuart Armstrong, Elia Nusi, who can play there. And our main striker, of course, is Shea Adams. Adam Armstrong is also there with Seiko Mara. So we've got a couple of options up front there. Now, nailing in position, I want Lavia playing as much as possible. And I want Nagalo playing as much as possible because these are the two guys who are young enough that if you give them a lot of game time, they could shoot their current ability yeah. right up. And you could be looking at either a lot of profit or one of your best players in the team by the time they're 21. So that's my thinking. If I did take a look at the best 11, they probably wouldn't be picked in it. Uh, we've got the likes of Diallo, Bednarek as well. Well, but I think uh, Bednarak is on loan right now this season. We've got the likes of Livramento, who's already at the club, but he's injured for the first four to five months, which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, Salisu is a very good player. Don't get me wrong. He's fantastic, and he's only 23. Carl Walker-Peters, we've already mentioned before, uh, but James Ward-Prowse, he is the deadly one, isn't he's it? Amazing, that set pieces of 20 yeah. and 20. Absolutely phenomenal with good natural fitness and stamina. Well, phenomenal natural fitness and stamina, to be honest. Uh, so that's who we're looking at, really. Um, and that was another one who was out on loan. So, starting off, how have we done? We played quite a few games, of course. World Cup year. We yeah. started off with two or draw. And it cost us because we scored a 92nd minute, what we thought would be a winner after they scored in the 89th minute. But no, Ivan Tony, who's been a bit of a naughty boy I this week. I bet he had week, a bet on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 93rd minute. Do you think that's why he didn't get picked to go 100%, in the World Cup? 100%. I mean, we spoke about this when he played, when they had the two friendlies that he was actually picked for the England squad and yeah. he didn't play in them. And the second friendly, we thought, oh, it's a dead sorry. He didn't play in the first friendly. Yeah. He's got to play in the second friendly. Didn't even come on up from the bench and we thought, what's Gareth Southgate doing? And now it's all come out. This is why the England played. England was told not to play him, I think. Yeah, yeah. And that's why he hasn't gone to the World Cup. Possibly. Absolutely. He could be in some deep trouble and probably suspended for quite a long I time. Think it's going to be, yeah. Because it wasn't just one or two times, it's it was like 200 times. years, yeah. <laughs> uh, then we played Tottenham and lost 3 0. So, God, I don't know what we're doing right there. When we played Leeds, we beat them 2-1. That That's was good. That's a good win. Great win. Uh, che Adams getting a brace there. MK, MK Dons, we lost on penalties. I did play a fully rotated team, though. Yeah. Because yeah, I think the league is more important for us to survive. We've got to stay in that Premier League, yeah. no matter what. We've got the worst team. Yeah. I really do think we actually have the worst team, even with the pl the, the other teams coming up. Not on Forest, they bought quite a lot. I think uh, we're just fortunate as well. We've got a striker like Che Adams. He, I mean, he's, he's not a top striker in the Premier League, but he's a good striker. Yeah. Uh, so we beat Wolves 3-2 after that, which is a fantastic result then this is even better because yeah. they are going to be relegation candidates as well Nottingham Forest 3-0 the team for two. yeah so I actually think that's a really good I'll, I'll start to the season start. yeah because take that puts us start. in fifth yeah, we've won three go, lost one Drew one. Very good. Che Adams is on the tail of Erlen Haaland, yeah. so he must be doing look something out, right. Look out. So we'll simulate his first season and see how we get on. Okay, first season. <laughs> oh, yeah. Five points. That was close, wasn't it? Did you also do what I did and look at the top and go, oh, no, the way I went straight to the bottom. <laughs> Very close indeed. 38 points. We're five points clear, to be fair, but we had we, a bad end in we there. We tried taking it away. Yeah, we, we even lost to Leeds at one point, you were right below us. I mean, so. I, wouldn't, I can't believe the free, well, apart from, I mean, we say apart from Nottingham Forest, but that's where they are at this present moment. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, and that's so, true. Yeah. Leeds, 
Leeds and Villa, very surprised have been down there. Yeah, so. they're normally quite good on football yeah. manager. Champions were Man City, Newcastle up there in fifth, Brighton in fourth. So Potter did finish above them, Yeah, but still. United finishing ninth, but it looks like they won the Europa League there, so they've got Champions League football, so we're all good. But you boys haven't, because you finished in the second half of the Bad. league. Bad season. Uh, okay, we won 11 games in total. That is it. We needed to win a lot more than just yeah, 11 definitely. Uh, in future in future seasons, unfortunately. Let's take a look at the goals. Who scored the most goals? Uh, Erlen Haaland got 35. Salah got 22. Isaac got 21. So, Jay Adams, no I'm longer. Well, I think that, that could be what it would be this season. Could be similar to that. Yeah. We just need Isaac to come back. You just, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we need, from I mean, he, when he was playing, he started to score a couple, didn't yeah. he? And he obviously got injured. In yeah, back, it's so, probably going to be Salah than Kane. More than I likely. I think so, yeah. Yeah, unless Ronaldo comes back far in for United. You just never know. You just... I mean, after that... But it's not like there's any this reason why he that he's done. I mean, you, you know the fans are going to... You know the players are going to be wanting him. To With open arms. Yeah, of course With they open will. arms. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Hello, mate. How yeah. are you? <laughs> Competitions then. How have we done? We already know we're out the Carabao Cup, but how have we done the FA Cup? Fourth round, we face Liverpool, so well, it's just a bad draw. Yeah. We'll move straight on then and have a look at the squad. Now, we played 38 games in the league and obviously yeah, one game outside. Games. That's 23, 23 for Jay Adams. You can't knock him for that. That's all right. That's good. Joe Arriba, though, with nine in that shadow striker role. Assist by Stuart Armstrong got nine. He probably played the other shadow striker. And um, Ward Prowse got himself nine as well. Yeah. I'm guessing we don't really have any threats at corners for James Ward Prowse to aim for at the minute, and that's probably, probably why that's quite a low number. We we'll probably do with just another striker up there that's just give us a, at least 15 goals. I yeah, think. yeah, or maybe like a Seiko Mara who yeah. might help out eventually, but we need to give them more game time. Transfer budget then. We've been given 50 million pounds, which is not bad, not bad, but it's sometimes like, you know, if we're looking for quality, that's yeah. one player. And especially when they are young, they hold value quite high. So we're gonna have to find these little hidden gems. Yeah. Okay, we'll have a look then in the second season. Christmas is coming at you quicker than you think. And what present would be better than a Manscaped package, whether it's for you or somebody else who doesn't groom their sleigh bells? Do your little drummer boy a favor and pick up the lawnmower 4.0 to prevent any more silent nights in the bedroom. Remember as well, I can get you 20% off plus free shipping when you use code Omega at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor. Yes, this is the perfect opportunity, lads, because the Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is your one-stop shop for any man who deserves it all. It has everything needed to deck the halls from face to balls just in time for mistletoe season. In this Platinum Package, Package, by the way, you get everything that is included in the performance package, but you also get some extras. Like the body wash, there's a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, and an ultra premium deodorant. Santa's sack isn't hairy, lad, so yours shouldn't be either. You'll get the lawnmower for your standard shaving, the weed whacker for your nose and ear hair. Do you think Mrs. Claus likes Santa Claus having hairy ears? No! The crop preserver and crop reviver to make them smell delicious. The leather wash bag, which looks very very classy. Not to mention the comfiest pair of boxes you will own and a Manscaped t-shirt that you can rock and let everyone know at Christmas that Ebenezer Scrooge is looking Ebenezer huge. Remember, Omega at Manscaped.com is the only code you need for 20% off plus free shipping. Take advantage of it this Christmas period. The link's in the top of the description. Right, Dad, we mentioned Che Adams. Sold into Everton. 27 years of age. I can't believe you sold our only striker. <laughs> we'll see we bring through first. £30 million. Pounds. I mean, all right, it's good money, but look, he's gone into Everton. Look, played two, scored two. He has scored two. I, I do see this, though. He cannot be registered for the next match. I hope they manage to register him for the, the Premier League because else he's played two, <laughs> obviously, during the transfer window, which you're allowed to. And then it's gone to a, 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 his full name. He has Everton in his name. Uh, that's something wrong there, Yeah, that's why. That's why. I mean, just pick a name. So he's got five first names there yeah. Everton. Zach, Fred, Adams, and Che. So he had it in his own name. So he obviously wanted to go there. They are giving him 120 grand a week. I mean, you can't blame him. He, he, he probably is an Everton supporter. You can't blame him wanting to go there and go in there when he gets the offer, can you, really? I mean, we I would mean, all do it, wouldn't we? Yeah, I like Che Adams, mm. but he is not a 120 grand a week player. No. Uh, we also, by the way, had to pay a lot of money to Birmingham, which I didn't realise was a clause. So they are quite rich now because of that 
transfer got, as well. You've got the Bellingham file on me there. It's come from there as well, no? Yeah, that's true. So, uh, they do well, don't they? Birmingham really bringing youth players through. Replacement, Vitor Roque. He's Brazilian. We like our Brazilians. We do. Now, he's not quite as good as Che Adams right now, but he's only 18. That's yeah. what we need to remember. He can also play on both wings, so if we do go to that, we have that option. He has good physical abilities to begin with, and he's got good basic abilities to be a good finisher, and the mental attributes are creeping up as well. At 14 and 13 there, and 13 for off the ball. So he's just not quite the finished product yet, but we are there to develop him because he has a fantastic potential, and that's what we like. And this one here, he he's training quite well, which means he's got good professionalism, and we all know professionalism means they grow and reach their potential, which yeah. is exactly what we need. 13 million pound is what we spent. He hasn't played that well for us yet. But we need to give him a bit of time. He hasn't scored for a while, to be fair, in the league anyway, for at least two seasons. But hopefully we can get some goals out of him at some point. Taylor Harwood Bellis was a last minute signing, kind of, anyway. Uh, he was going to be a backup centre back. Don't worry too much about that. We did spend £5.75 million, pound, but he's not going to be starting. We have signed other players. Don't you panic. Uh, Callum Mwendu is another striker we signed. So we signed right. two strikers yeah. for the price of a Che Adams. Yeah. Uh, this guy again, 21 years of age, so he is the highest age that we could possibly go for. He's a little bit further on in this development than Vitor Roque. French, he come through the PSG Youth Academy, so we know that's good. He started well. And he has started very well. Yeah. We signed him for the same price what Rennes bought him for the season that's before. Unusual, that is unusual. Yeah. Whether they got themselves relegated or not, I'm Scoring not quite 11 sure. goals as well. Yeah, so he's probably their top scorer in the league. Yeah. Um, and we got two from two from him already and a player of the match with a good average rating too. So I like Calamondo, he's also got a very good potential on the game. Um, uh, a few people are going to be loving this signing because he has been recommended so many times to me in the comments. It's Oscar Gluck. Now, a new wonder kid to football yeah. manager this year. Has a very good potential. An Israeli player from Maccabee Tel Aviv, 19 years of age. That you can pick up for around about £2 million. It's a bargain, isn't it? Yeah. Considering ten, ten he has goals 10 season, goals yeah. last season, and really, he's not a striker. He's more of a centre attacking midfielder. Uh, so we brought him in. He can play centre mid as well. Still really young, really good potential. That youth to gold thing that we're looking at, we need to progress these players now because we have a lot of potential here for a really cracking team. Finally, our final sign is Fabian Ryder, uh, another player that we used to like last year from Young Boys again. I mention those two teams all the time. Norgeland, Young Boys, go and find them. Yeah. Not Young Boys, don't go find <laughs> Young Boys. Go find the club in Switzerland, Young Boys, and find their players. The £18 million pound is probably quite a lot of money considering, but... We are at the point where we're trying to look for the elite players that are 21 and below who can yeah. start. He is that guy. So bringing him in, very good player. Uh, that's what I like about him, that passing of 15, vision of 15, some really good concentration decision makings. In centre midfield, you need that. We 100%. need that desperately. Yeah, definitely. Okay, those are the sign-ins and the sells that we have done. Uh, tactically, we are going to this now. So we've changed it ever so slightly. We've bought two strikers. Let's use the two strikers with a shadow striker in Oscar Glutes. So we've gone to a 4-3-1-2. Uh, Nagalo, I still want playing there. Lavia, I still want playing in the Roman Playmaker. We've got two centre midfield on attacks. That's going to be open then for James Will Prowse probably on one side. And there's a couple of players who can play on the other one. Uh, Oscar Gluck in the shallow striker. Vito Roque as a pressing forward. Callum Wendu as an advanced forward. And that's kind of where the way we are setting up right now. See, see if that makes a bit of a difference. And we've got the wing backs who obviously bomb on ahead. Yeah. Schedule wise, let's have a look. How have we done? Well, Premier League, our first game is Arsenal. So we know that's always going to be a bit of a struggle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we lost 3 0 to them. They had Gary Jesus who scored a brace. We then beat Newcastle. What a result. Considering very they finished fifth, yeah, we finished in now. 17th. So that's a very good sign for us. That next result is a bigger result, though. That's huge, isn't for the it? Fans. I knew you'd like that. For the fans, that is such a big result. Yeah, absolutely. They, I mean, people who don't know that that's our arch rivals um, because they are so close to each other as well. Yeah. Um, but they really hate each other. And they I'm, do. A bit, of, a bit of do with that as well is, is a little bit to do with my favourite manager, Harry Redknapp as well, isn't it? Yeah. Going from one team to another team. That was not a good like idea. A, no. Not a good idea but at all. Going back in the day though, Yeah. after the second, well, during the Second World War, the Dell got bombed. Yeah. And there was um, a bomb and it landed on the pitch, funny enough, and, and it done an 18 foot crater and it um, burst some water pubs that was underneath the ground and flooded the pitch. Mm. So when the uh, the war finished and they had to repair the Dell, they um, 
they played at Phantom Park. Yeah, which is Portsmouth Ground. I think like things like that, rivalries just disappear, oh, don't they? And during the war, you help each other out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, fair play to those two. But now the rivalry is back, and yeah, it's definitely. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but how many will that be facing though in the Carabao Cup second round? Mm. Considering you know there's two leagues between the two. Yeah, it's quite a nice little thing that we've had the opportunity to play against them because then next in the third round we play Man United, so we don't get right. any lucky breaks there. We play them back to back. Back there. to back there. Yeah. Uh, two easy wins for Man United. <laughs> we we were looking at what um, Southampton have won over the years, and they've won one FA Cup. One FA Cup in total, and it was and in the seventies. Who did they? Beat. Did they beat Man United? Yes, they did. They beat Man United 1-0. Typical. Man United was in the top league, which was Division 1 at the time. Yeah. Southampton was in Division 2. Wow. <laughs> you don't see that very often at all No, you now, don't do you? nowadays, no. No. Very difficult to do with the money that is involved in yeah. the Premier League. But don't don't neglect the Papa John's trophy that they won in 2010. Hey, come on. That's a come good on. trophy, isn't it? Hey, for Plymouth Fargo, I'd love a Papa John's Definitely, trophy. Yeah. That'd be quality. Nice trip to Wembley as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, they got an English third division south there from 1922. Yeah. You know, there's some very old trophies here. Year, and that league won in 1960 but they've never done anything else and when I seen their honours I was like oh I thought there'd be more Yeah, because they've I mean, been around the, the Premier best... League for all of my life almost well the best they've done um, when it was the old league so it was Division 1 Division 2 when it was Division 1 they came runners up against Liverpool oh, Okay. so that's the best they've done in the top league Yeah. in the Premier League I think the best they've reached was 6th yeah I remember so... them playing in Europe yeah Yeah. fair enough okay so that's what we need to beat them really isn't it 6th yeah. I'd say modern history we need that's to beat six. That's what I was going to use as my target. And yeah, that is our target. <laughs> uh, we've only played two games. We don't need to worry about anything else. Let's just simulate this second season, see how we get on. Second season and we're up to 11th place. Happy we've with that, definitely. Avoided the relegation battle and we've kind of like just slipped into mid-table and I like that. Yeah. Calm, collected in mid-table, building something here, 51 points, nice and safe, yeah. really early. You can relax for the rest of the season then because we know we're not, we're too far away from the European spots. We're when you look at fine. the teams in the top there, you, you, you would expect to be beyond I would say 80% of the players are teams that's there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Wolves and Fulham have done very well yeah. there. You always get a couple of clubs who overachieve each year, don't you? And then there's obviously a few that don't achieve very much at all, like Tottenham down there in 10th. So you've gone for... I mean, you've progressed from 11th to 10th. <laughs> well done. Yeah. I can't really say much because United, we've gone 7th. And that's progression, but we're in a lower com competition in the Conference League. It looks like Brentford have won the Conference League because they are now in the Europa League, which is quite good. I think they won something last season as well. But we didn't yeah, try to... I think they did because yeah. then they went in the conference league. Yeah. So they've done really well to win that, I think. Uh, Brighton getting relegated. That's a big surprise, isn't it? Yeah, considering last season, Champions League to relegation. Unbelievable, wasn't it? That's mental. Yeah. That's actually crazy, isn't it? Imagine that if you're... I mean, the elation of, oh my God, we've qualified yeah. for the Champions League. Nope, what? we're getting relegated. Yeah. That's terrible. That's... Wow, 18 points as well. That's really bad. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't even realise that. That's got to be like the second worst yeah, behind Derby. Yeah. Uh, Erlen Haaland got 36. Mohamed, it's the same players. Same I thought I had gone back in time. <laughs> James Ward Prowse got 17 assists, though. That's fantastic. We are bagging some same yellow cards. Was, though. The, was the most success last season as well. It is, yeah. So he's done very well there for Newcastle, who finished eighth. So they've dropped out as well from where they were previously. But Liverpool have clinched the title, 95 points. Ahead of Man City, who've dropped off quite a lot. But there we go. Other competitions then. Did we overcome Manchester United? Did we win the FA Cup, you ask? We did not. Third round by Tottenham. Third round by Man United. <laughs> All right, we won't dwell on it too much. Uh, 21 goals from Callum Wendo, uh, nine goals from Vitor Roque. That's poor. Yeah. That's poor. I mean, we finished mid table. We'll take that. But that's less goals than what we had last season. Uh, Oscar Gluck also got nine as well from that shadow striker role. Uh, what I am liking, though, is the development of these players. We can see some of the star ratings improving from what they were when we bought them. But what I'm not happy with is the average rating. We only have one player that's above a seven. Yeah. And that's when you know you're going to be in trouble if that doesn't increase. Uh, we're just lucky this season. We obviously defended quite well, I guess. and Or maybe the other opposition just didn't play that well against <laughs> us. Either way, we'll take it. Yeah. Next season, we've been given again roughly about the same as last time. However, we are losing our best centre-back, Salisu. He would not sell, sign a new deal. 
he has gone to Bayern Munich on a free. This is the problem when you're bringing through the good players. We've said it at the beginning of the video, didn't we? You know, they're going to get a certain stage and they're going to want to move on. Yeah. And we've got to cash in on it. Yeah. And I don't know whether you guys have noticed it, but on this year's Football Manager, we are seeing a lot of players who, before they even get to that end of contract six months, uh, point they say that they are opting to leave on a free it's a new kind of like a new feature that they've implemented in the last couple of years but the issue is like like half of the players who are running out of contract are all opting to leave yeah don't know whether you guys like it or not i think it's realistic but i don't like it no and that's the difference yeah you see it time and time again in the last couple of years in real life i just don't like it no either way because as a manager you're losing a lot of money there uh from salisu who was worth 30 40 million pounds the players do it for one reason and one reason only it's to get boost, a better sign in fee, boost their wages, yeah. Don't they? better sign, sign in fee, fee uh, and a bigger wage. Uh, okay, which you can't play them, I guess. I would probably do exactly the same. Okay, let's go forward. Third season, see who we bring in to replace Salisu. To be honest, we also say goodbye to Kyle Walker Peters. <laughs> Selling all your favourite players here, yeah. Dad. Uh, we sold him to West Ham, which is probably the only downside of this transfer, for 30 million. So that's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot of money because then that almost doubles our transfer budget when you also consider we also sold Adam Armstrong for 10 million pound. Player who hasn't really played a lot for us starting games has mainly been a bench player, but he hasn't scored a lot of goals when he has come on. So 10 million pound, I think is quite acceptable. That doubles our transfer budget to then kind of replace them yeah. with the younger players that we bring in through Youth to Gold. So, who did we bring in? The first of three players and the most expensive was Giorgio Scalvini, one of the best ball playing centre back wonder kids on the game. Italian, six foot four, only 20 years of age. He's phenomenal. A lot of 16s in there already. Yeah. That is the Salisi yeah, replacement. Good, it? Yeah. Uh, the only downside, I guess, is his acceleration is only 11, but we can always increase that. He came from Atalanta, 35 million pounds. That would have been pretty much all of our budget. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If it weren't for the fact that we sold other players as well. That's because mainly he's not playing as many games as probably what he would hoped. At Atalanta, we're going to give him the game time. So that's kind of like a stunted development, and he's still that good. Two years of barely playing, and he's that good still. Yeah. So we need to give him the game time that he requires. You're only trading your teeth, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're yeah. chucked in the deep end in, in regards to you need to be that really yeah. good defensively <laughs> solid player, or else they'll bring in somebody who's a lot more experienced. Yeah. Uh, so that's the case with Scalvini. But there's two more players I brought in, and I raided Atalanta because I also brought in a third Third striker. We have Rasmus Hoyland. Six foot three. Yes, this is this year's version of what Erlen Haaland was a couple of years ago. Yeah when he bursts onto the scene because this guy is Danish, not Norwegian. So he's kind of that Scandinavian yeah. uh, or Nordic type of player. But again, he's six foot three. He's quite quick. He's very strong. He's good off the ball. He can finish. He can head. It's basically Haaland a couple yeah, of years ago. Early, yeah. We yeah. got him early. 40 million pounds is exactly the same price as what Atalanta paid yeah. Strum Graz. Uh, and he scored he's two goals for two us goals already. already. Yeah. He hasn't again, Atalanta, been playing. Uh, one goal uh, in four four games, but only two starts. So yeah. in each of the years, he's only started one game and been a substitute appearance for the other. The thing I like there is his average rating already is in the sevens. Yes. So we've started to improve already. Yeah. I mean, even the games that they did play him had a seven yeah. and they never continued playing him. Yeah. It's mental because I actually really rate this guy. He has one of my favorite traits as well, like speed the offside trap. So we need to focus uh, on using uh, his pace and power for good, for good, for those types of things. Our final player is replacing Kyle Walker-Peters and it's Gwindo from Salzburg. We mentioned Salzburg yeah, earlier uh, and their link. And, which is quite funny to be fair, he is also from Mali, an African player from Salzburg. Yeah. It's Sadio Mane yeah. 2.0. I mean, he doesn't play in the same position. He plays left back or centre back, mainly left back because he is only six foot and better suited to bombing up and down the line uh, but that is going to be our Car Walker Peters replacement at least we replaced like him. him straight away yeah uh, and he only cost us 11 million pounds so yeah. I quite like that to be fair that's a really good signing in my eyes so those three guys come in uh, and we are developing quite nicely uh, a very nice team and this time we have changed the roles we've gone for a DM and we've gone for three players up top so sacrifice that shell striker for three strikers instead. We've got Scalvini on the left centre-back, Guindo 
at left back. And if we take a look here at the pick without restrictions, uh, does it do the best positions there? I don't suppose it does. It doesn't. Uh, let's go best 11 there. Bang. So our best 11, according to the assistant manager, doesn't have those two in, which is the reason why those are the only two that I selected in there. But the rest of the team is the lineup that I would suggest would be my favorable positions. Vito Roque is a pressing forward, Calamuendo as the advanced forward, but this time they've got Hoyland stuck right in the middle as a target forward. Yeah. Uh, and we need to be utilising him but, as yeah. that. He is going to be attacking corners for somebody like James Will Prowse, who loves hitting in corners. Very good stuff. Okay, let's take a look then at the results. So far, we Ooh. defeated Manchester United 3-0, and Hoyland got both his goals there. Peter Roque so. also scored as well. Uh, a draw against Watford followed. That's not fantastic. Chris Wood got in a 76th minute equaliser there. We beat Norwich in the cup, though, and Hoyland got four. Get in. Mm. Good start. Absolutely. Uh, but then, unfortunately, we faced a very good Chelsea team. Yeah. And we also went down to 10 men in the 89th minute, but we lost 4 2. So that's Stanford Bridge. Understand, but I wouldn't expect to win that game anyway. We had a belting game against Plymouth Argyle in, in a that, friendly, yeah. though. Green Six, Army. four, come on. Yeah. And as we're recording this, I don't know whether you know this because I only see it before you came round. But Shuey, Shuey. <laughs> <laughs> or, or famous manager. But Shuey, our famous manager, has signed a new contract. Get in. Yes. That's great news. I am pleased with that. Very oh, good. A bit worried, but... Steven Schumacher. Yeah. He has been linked for so many championship jobs, and we're like, no, please don't leave no, us. No, don't. <laughs> You're way too. He started as assistant manager as well, so he's I mean, done we, very well. We've been saying that we feel that he he should stay with us to so we we believe in him we've given him his first job he should stay with us at least two seasons i think yeah but if he does it this season and we go up brilliant happy days yeah. so he signed a new contract which is fantastic for us a good good five-year deal i think 2027 brilliant. Uh, very good stuff okay now back on to southampton we have quite an interesting season here so it started off quite well obviously the mid-table finish i'd like to start pushing for those european spots now all right then. with the development that we've got we're yeah. going very attacking of course with three players Set off mid-table again, though. I would set off mid-table, yeah. don't get me wrong. Just be out of that relegation scrap Another year, completely. I think, because we brought in a couple of new players. They've got a, they got a bond yet. Yeah. Man United's bottom of the league at the minute. Ooh. Three losses. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, let's see if it's third season and see how we get on. Third season, we've dropped down to 13th Ooh. place. We're still mid-table. Yeah, yeah. We are still mid-table, so we need to focus on that. Uh, but we do have... Europa League qualification. Hello. Hello. Right, okay. We'll take a look at that in a sec. Uh, Leeds came back up, went straight back down. Like Forest. Yeah. Uh, 49 points. So we were safe, to be honest, by quite quite a bit, really. Stuff what we should have done better then. Yeah. Really. I was over one or two places. Like an eight for months. ninth, yeah. something like that. Liverpool finished as champions again, ahead of Arsenal, City and Chelsea. Newcastle and Man United uh, finished in the other two European spots. The goals were scored again by Haaland, Mitrovic and Lukaku this time round. Other competitions. What have we won? It's the FA Cup! Get in! Ooh, we have doubled, what a favourite one! We have doubled the FA Cup wins. We've already doubled the trophies that we have won. Yeah. Uh, we beat Newcastle in the final. Oh, Every day of the week. Yeah, interesting. The yeah. Alan Shearer derby. Uh, Vito Roque got the most goals in the competition as well. So that's fantastic. Let's take a look at the game itself. Vito Roque scored both in the final. A 45th plus one right before half time. They equalize right after half time and we scored in the 75th minute to win the game. Fantastic stuff. We got a lot of yellow cards, but it doesn't matter. Nope. We also took home the win. I would say we were starting to struggle then, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Diving in tackles, things again, didn't it? Very much so. <laughs> uh, so that's fantastic. A, a trophy in our third season. I don't mind the, the lower finish in Especially the league the now. Cup. Yeah, and we go into Europa League. Ooh. So that's very good yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at the goals then. This looks better. Ah, there we go. Look. Rasmus Four Hoyland. 32. 32 goals. Hey. Woo -hoo. We've got a little one coming. That's good. Uh, You've got to keep him though. Oh, yeah, that's the trouble. Vito Roque looks Looks like he just got all of his goals in the FA Cup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because he only got 12 across the season. I think he got seven or eight in the FA Cup. Callum Wendu also got 12 with 11 assists, which is good. And Oscar Gluck got 11 and 12 when he's been playing up front. So he's actually played more games than what the other two have. So it looks like he is coming on his development a little bit more uh, than the other two are. And as you can see there, his attributes look really good, to be fair. So the Israeli 21-year-old now coming into his own. Okay. 
that's I think that's a really positive season. We've got to be really happy with that. I mean, I was a bit disappointed after seeing it, but no, it's the best season we've had. I'm yeah, the bits. That's a good season. Absolutely. Next Love season, the FA Cup. The same amount of money again, around about fifty-five million pounds. So we'll see who we can bring in and try and fight for something in Europe. Yeah. Okay. Oh, before we do though, this guy came through our youth academy, Mark Vaughan. <laughs> He looks incredible. He looks absolutely phenomenal for a 16 year old. We mentioned how good the Youth Academy is. Yeah. Here we are. Here's your guy. He's already striker. two star, five star ability. A striker with good pace, acceleration, good natural fitness, what you like to see. Good flair. Very good finishing, and he has the ability, the, the attributes that you want in finishing. Yeah. Anticipation, composure. Oh, well, there we go. The boys that take over from us. Exactly. You Patreon members, remember on the five pound tier, you get this save game file. So, as a point from a youth to gold, who know it's going to be a team yet you want to take over because all of these youngsters are going to be growing into something. This could be one of your ones that you might see a lot more of than what we will. But anyway, let's go to fourth to the fourth season. Now, Dad, I did say I would be open to selling players. Should the offers come in and Andre right. had a big offer come in from Bruce Dortmund. I rejected the first one. He kicked off. He wanted to leave. So I eventually got an offer for £35 million because then I realised he's in his last year of his contract. Oh, well, they're going to take it then, yeah. And I'd rather take £35 million and leave him for another season. Yeah. So he moves on and he has actually developed quite nicely. Uh, we did also sell Joe Aribo for £8.5 million. So we haven't really been using him uh, and he moves on now and he's 29. So it's the right time to, to yeah. move on. If I was being really strict with youth to gold, you're not allowed to use anybody who is 30 or above. Well, we so he would be at the door. But yeah. the reason why we're not being that strict is because I can't like obviously choose what the assistant manager chooses. So it's a lot harder that way. But anyway, we have built up £46 million of transfers out and we have spent £75 million in total, Ooh. including a couple of the game's best wonder kids. We're talking Endrick. Right. He has the highest potential range on the game. He is the new Yusuf Abakulko from last season. He has the 200 out of 200 potential range ability. He doesn't quite look like it yet and he hasn't really been used much yet, but 19 years of age, he still has that time to develop if he has played. He's got two and two. Two and two already and he only average started rating. one. Look at the average rating. 9.2. Endrick for you boys. <laughs> Endrick. And... In the 190 potential range, so not 200, but only 190, we have Warren Zaire Emery, who is going to be the replacement for Andre yeah. from Paris Saint-Germain. £35 million, we have to give them the money, unfortunately. He hasn't even played any games for them properly yet. He did there in 2022-23, uh, but he's been playing really for the PSG too. Went out on loan last season and only played one game. That's a shame. You're going to be playing more here. You already have two starts already. 6.9, not amazing, but I've seen this guy as maximum and I would love a piece of that pie. Yeah. Whether we'll get him at that, I don't really know. Maybe you guys would on the Patreon, but I am definitely buying a squad here for you guys and you're going to love now this one was just because he was so cheap my scouts brought into me and i thought it's a uh, risk-free signing he's six foot four he's 18 from portugal from gil vicente 1.8 million pound he's in the under 21s if you do get the save game file hey, well, take a look you're gonna be sport for strikers yeah i mean we got three up front, time. so that's the reason why yeah. we've got them all because who knows a big bid can come in from rasmus hoyland yeah and he might have to leave because they have already been coming in 51 million pound there from Leicester, 39 million pound from Bayern, but I've been rejecting them so far. Now these two players, you think I've never heard of those names before, that's because they are regenerated players. Let's start with Stephen Jones, who is Spanish. Stephen Jones? Jones. I thought <laughs> he must have a dual nationality. He does not. He was born in Barcelona. Where Stephen Jones. Stephen Jones from I don't know. Spain. No idea. But there we go. Okay. He is a centre back 6 1 from Real Madrid's Academy. We have brought him in. He does look quite good. He's only 18, remember. And we have spent £7 million on him, but he's been playing for the Real Madrid B team last year and had a very good high average yeah. rate. And that's amazing for a centre back. The fact that he's getting like five assists like you think goals for a centre backs all right set pieces but getting assists you think yeah. oh, he must be quite good then uh so we spent seven million pounds and we've actually played him two games already ray lomax man city we keep going back to the the man city uh the the man city hotbed of talent 18 years of age this guy is actually english yeah he has good potential on the game by the looks of it there are scouts written in very highly and he can play left back and he can play left centre back uh, which is the reason why I picked him up. 
has very good anticipation and bravery, which I yeah. thought was quite quite good. But he's only five foot six, so I'd say stick to left back, mate. He's a tall player then. Yeah, for you. Um, <laughs> 90 million pounds is quite a lot of money, but it's a gamble that I was willing to take. So I spent quite a lot of money, but I think I spent it quite well. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Tactically, then, we stick with what we have. We got Guindo playing on that left-hand side because if we didn't, he would be kicked out of that. But let's take a look at the best 11 there. Uh, I think that's basically what our best 11 should be, which is the reason why I put Guindo in there instead of Broad. That's how I would see it instead. Uh, so these three guys up front, we need them to carry on scoring as many goals. Yeah. And we got the supply here from midfield. Lavia, by the way, is coming on leaps and bounds and looking very good indeed quite a good player with his value of 73 to 93 million pound and every season as well ward prowse has bids coming in and every season we reject them and he never really kicks up much of a fuss god he's, bless he's you good, james ward prowse he's a good professional yeah i agree so schedule wise let's take a look at the games that we have played we started off in the community shield of course after winning the FA Cup, we lost that Community Shield 5-2 to Liverpool. But the most important thing is the Premier League, we won all three games. Yes, yeah. Very good. Everton, 2-1 victory there. Rasmus Hoyland getting both. He then got a hat-trick in the next game against Brighton, who bounced back up. And then Luton, their first time in the Premier League for a very long time. Rasmus Hoyland also got a brace in that one too. He's doing well already, isn't he? Yep. Endrick got a couple, and I think he got a couple of assists as well. So that's the reason why he got man of the match. And Vitor Roque also also scored in that game as well. Happy days. Yeah. Uh, I can't see anything about the Europa League. No, that's what I was just looking for. I was so there. that's a bit strange. What's happened there? Did we not? Did we qualify for the knockout stage before you play into it or something? So we enter the league phase on the 18th, but we are at the 2nd of September and they haven't actually given us when that's going to happen. It's dr weird. It's drawn on the 18th. Okay, fair enough. Oh, well, we don't know when we're getting it yet, so no. we'll just have to find out at the end of the season. But so far, we're top of the league, so we'll take that we've for got, now. We've got a little bit of history with um, European teams, yeah, especially Spain. I know I've, I've, we've spoken about this story before when we when we spoke about the oh, well, London teams. shirts. It was no, they had a, a representative come from um, Atletico Bilbao, come over, and he bought fifty shirts, yeah, of Southampton. Went back and he distributed them between Atletico Bilbao and Atletico Madrid. Yeah. And that's why these two teams play in the same colour as what Southampton do. Yeah. So that, that's the little story with the kit. They've always played in the red. So, and I've used the story a few times, but it is an interesting story, isn't it? I think so. I definitely agree. And that was obviously in last year's games. So there might be new people here yeah. uh, who are hearing that story for the very first time. You're welcome. Make sure you're subscribed. Okay, let's simulate this fourth season, see how we get on. Fourth season. Oh, get in. Second place. Oh, 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 oh. That's a big leap. Runners up to Liverpool again. Oh, yeah. Oh. 91 points to I mean, we weren't 18. close to winning it, but no. to be there. Yeah, brilliant. absolutely. Uh, and we pinched it by the looks of it on the very last game of the season, uh, as we can see here. So we dropped down. We were fifth for a while. Banks into the top four. And then on the final day, we got second, which is we haven't been there since like match day six. So that's fantastic stuff. That's oh, what we wanted. That beats in. our uh, Premier League record. But the most important thing, we also got the golden bootler. Oh, Rasmus Hoyland with 31 hey, goals. Who is this lad? Yeah, Dominic Carlo is playing for Man United, which is a bit odd. But he also got the highest average rating. James Will Prowse got 15 assists, probably just banging in corners yeah. for Hoyland to score. Yeah, and he also got the most amount of matches there with nine. Our goal difference is the best in the league as well. Other than Liverpool, who had 64. Oh, sorry, I'm at the top. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I looked at the top one, actually. Well, if you don't count them, then <laughs> we win the league. Yeah. Uh, so they've won three in a row now, which is quite depressing as a Man United fan, but there we go. Bournemouth, Luton and West Brom have gone down, so maybe we'll see Leeds come up, probably. Uh, and Nottingham Forest. And Nottingham Forest again. <laughs> but Brighton survived, so well done, Brighton. Okay, other competitions then. How do we do in Europe? Quarter-final exit oh, by Manchester United. Semi-final of the FA Cup and quarter-final by Brentford in the Carabao so, Cup. To be honest with you, really, that is a really good season. That's a hell of a season, Because yeah. we, we've done really well in the Cup games, got so far, come runners up. I'm yeah. happy with that, definitely. Uh, we beat Man United 3-0 in the first leg. 
And then we lost 7-0 in the second leg. <laughs> Unbelievable. Always do well when you win your own game. But yeah. You can't afford to be stuffed 7-0. 7-0. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing that way. It's round of 16 that I wanted to have a look at. We beat uh, Olympic Leon there. Did That's we have to result. play the knockout round? We didn't. So we finished in the top half of the group. We did. Man United there finished top. They won 8 out of 8. We finished in 4th there. We did lose a game in Europe. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so we drew good. 2, which was Valencia and Anderlecht. We won 6. Six, Leon again, four nil. Oh my, look at the goals we're scoring in Europe. Yeah. And we only conceded two. Wow, we were very That's tough good. in Europe. Yeah. Okay, ruthless in fact. Very good stuff. I'm happy with that. Very good season indeed. 54 goals from Rasmus Hoyland. He scored more goals than he played games. <laughs> Jesus, in a I'm three more, striker formation. I would say I'm more impressed with the players behind him. 28, 28 22. 22. You took, I mean, our first season, that was our top striker, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that was Che Adams. Yeah. More than Che Adams. Yeah. Uh, 22, Callum Wendo got 17 there. 28 assists from James Ward Prowse. Fabian Ryder's coming in with double figures in both. Look at the greens as well. The um, so many. average ratings as well. So much more. Everybody's delighted. They love playing for the club. Squad's looking a little bit slim. But we've got some youngsters coming through, of course, from our youth academy who can eventually be there. Oh, we've got a goalkeeper there now from this year. Fraser Allard. Oh, my God. That guy's insane. Yeah. He's hell of a good. His handling and reflex is 15 for each. Patreon members. He's 16. I've got one season left of him. In another five years, he could be the world's best goalkeeper. Yeah. Right, okay, fair enough. You've got some unbelievable talents coming through. And you still got Gavin Bazuna, who's good. Okay. How many, How much money have we got? Another. They're just consistent with this. 50 million every year, aren't they? We're losing Seiko Mara, but we haven't really used well, the, him a the lot. The club are still probably making a good bit of money, like profit yeah. on top of that, as well as giving it back into the team as well. So 43 million in the bank. That, yeah. um, obviously, we've gone up and down each year that we've had different um, competitions and stuff. Now we're in Europe. It should be a little bit more consistent. Champions League money, that's going to be a big, that, that's gonna be a big a, thing for us. So our last season, and it's a big season for us. Absolutely. Right, okay, let's go forward to the fifth and final season. Dad, we sold Vito Roque. What did I just say to you? This is our biggest season. We sold him. Wait, we sold him for 104 million pound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he only scored 13 league goals. All right, all they right. They didn't even come in for Hoyland. 104 million. Yeah, that's unbelievable, isn't yeah. it? That's an absolutely outstanding. I don't think any team in, in the position that we're in would turn that down. No, I mean, he is fantastic. Look at the growth on the player, considering yeah. what he was in that first season when we paid... Uh, whatever it was for him at age 18. Now he's 21. Yes, he's going to be one of the world's best strikers. Hell of a profit, isn't it? But it's a big profit. Yeah. And I think you're going to like the signing that I brought in instead. And you yeah. guys are definitely going to like him. Welcome to the club, Yusufa Makoko. Mm -hmm. We mentioned him before. Yusufa Makoko, one of the best wonder kids on the game. He is also in that 190 potential range category. So we have two of them and Endrick, who is in the 200 potential range category. They are the three best wonder kids that you, you can get. Look at the greens on there. Yeah. Dribbling 16, finishing 16, composure 19. 19. That's good, isn't it? And the physicals Pace, are phenomenal. 16, yeah. Yes, he's not quite up to Vitor Roque's level in regards to how good Vitor Roque was, but he's not really been playing. And no. that's the trouble. Yeah. If they're not playing, they're not going to develop. Game time is most important. Two games, Give them game time. One goal, one assist, one player of the match, and 7.8 average rating of two games. Of two games. He is going to repay us. And 100 for million in the bank. Exactly, because we only paid less than £30 million pound for him, <laughs> which right. is mental, isn't it? it? We're going to take it then. We did sign a couple of other players, but I'll tell you what, I just I had too much money, and that's, the, <laughs> that's what happens in Youth to Gold at this point. Five years in, you have more money than what you know what to spend on. So you end up either spending it on crap, or you just that's the thing, you got pick... The you ones got, that you want. You've got to try to discipline yourself that you don't buy crap as yeah. well because you can waste money quite a lot as well. Exactly. You? So I picked up this right back who I think is a really good backup. Right back has an okay potential. Not bad starting off with. He can also play centre defensive midfield. Portuguese and he only costs £1.5 billion. Pound. I loaned him straight out to Club Bruges who are starting him as a good player for four appearances That's so far. Sure, yeah. So development, again, that game time that we need. And I also spent £10 million on this guy. He has a fantastic portrait. 
Portuguese name, João Veloso dos Santos. It's the only reason why I signed him. <laughs> nah, he's good, to be fair. He's still 19 as well. From Porto, £10.25 million. So hasn't played for Porto yet, but we won't give him that much game time, but he is there or thereabouts. So it's yeah. up to you guys, possibly, who will give him game time. But he already has 17 for passing and 16 for work rate. So attacking-wise, uh, not for work rate, for vision, sorry. Attacking-wise, he's going to be good. Gets in the opposition area, those types of things he, he's very good at. Okay, so those are the signings that we have made. And yet, we still had £67 million in the bank right. <laughs> if we wanted to. The board would be happy with us. It literally, I literally just like, there's nobody who I really want to sign. No. You know, so that that might still be there when, when you guys take over the Patreon. So all I want to do is I want to play Makoko on the left. Endrick on the right and I've changed the player roles around to suit them a little bit more because um, Endrick is more of a supplier so I've got him on a complete forward on support uh, because he likes to drop back and get the ball we didn't play him that much that season that was a mistake we know he has that unbelievable potential he only played 21 games but only with three starts we need to give him more game time that's what we're doing this season and one goal to assist so far not letting us down is he not letting us down uh, so we need to be aware of that now that we have lost Vito Roque we need the one of those two to really step up and get yeah. the goals in uh, so so that's what we're looking like. We've even changed around the roles in the midfield as well to so make them a little bit more uh, solid and wing backs instead of inverted wing backs more on support than anything. So I have changed the tactic around. Best 11 looks like this, but you've got to remember that these two wouldn't be there. It would be Makoko and it would be Endrick, but Hoyland's in the middle. Ryder, Ward Prowse, Lavia now, who looks unbelievable. Look how many greens has he's developed yeah. now that he's 22 and now he's worth 90 to 110 million pound Nagalo and Scalvini brilliant players now absolutely the only player that we've been playing who is probably over the age of 25 unless Livramento is now 25 He's not, he's 23, it's James Will Prowse. Yeah. James Will Prowse is surrounded by players who are 23 and younger, and that's impressive. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so he is going out there as the veteran. And, and we and, started watching him when he was that age. Yeah, and he still looks that age. <laughs> uh, so there we go. So how have we done so far? Schedule-wise, we have won every single game, yeah, including definitely. all of our friendlies. Uh, Leicester, 4-0. We're, we're banging in goals for fun again. Rasmus Hoyland got himself 4 Crystal Palace, we beat them 2-1 with Yusuf Makoko and Endrick. And then we have a Brentford 4-1 victory away from home. Hoyland, Lavia, Gluck, Kalamuendo, they're all getting in on the act. Our Champions League games, we've got Besiktas, Feyenoord, Bayern Munich, Roma, Basel, Real San Sebastian, Real, Real Madrid, Madrid, and then Madrid. Juve. Some Ooh. tricky games. I still like the thing we would qualify. Yeah? yeah? Maybe for the playoff thing? Yeah, yeah, I still like the thing. A quick one for you then. Why are we called the Saints? Since our, you know, our nickname is the Saints. Is it something to do with the church around the church near the stadium? You could say it. In a way, it is. But when they were formed in 1885, they were formed as part of the church football team. Uh, okay, yeah. So it was St. Mary's Church. Yeah. And that's why they were called the Saints. And that's why I think personally that they, they moved they were at the Dell for 103 years I think it yeah. was um, and then when they had the purposely built stadium for them they went back to the St Mary's area where that yes. church was I think that's probably what they called the church, the, the ground St Mary's St Mary's yeah, yeah. I thought you've that been was, to haven't you yeah I have yeah, yeah. very nice stadium when it was first I think it was the first season or second season you went there second season yeah. I went there uh, watched them versus Norwich and it was a Ricky Lambert yeah. classic he came on scored great games 4-2 yeah, so yeah. it was it's yeah. the closest Premier League stadium to us uh, so me and my mates went for our birthday. I bought it for my, for, for not my birthday, sorry. I bought it for my friend Dan's uh, birthday. Great birthday present, don't you agree? Yeah. Guess what he got me in return? A bottle of blue TVX <laughs> from Tesco. He didn't even get the brand <laughs> of WKD, which still I would have been like, why have you got me this? Yeah. No, he got me a bottle of blue TVX. And I was like, Dan, I got you Southampton tickets this year. <laughs> and you got me this four months later. But there we go. Gotta love Dan. Okay, let's simulate this fifth and final season. Fifth and final season? We're Premier League winners! Good! I mean, it's a low go tally. Don't get me wrong. I don't care. 
<laughs> yeah, points tally, but yeah, it's we've the won the league. Unbelievable. Liverpool dropped off a cliff there down to 75 points. We only lost seven. We won one more game than them, which was the decider. And we beat some big teams in there. Yeah. Scoring a lot of goals. We got 49 in our goal difference there. Phenomenal. We're champions after five years using youth to gold. Only signing players are 21 or younger. So you can do it. And Rasmus Holland only scored 21. He scored all them goals <laughs> It's mental, isn't it? It's absolutely mental. Uh, Ward Prowse got 17 assists. Hoyland also got... Hoyland and Haaland. I think <laughs> I, I think you say Haaland's name is like Haaland, don't you? Yeah, someone like that, But yeah. I know, I looked up how you say Rasmus's name and it's Hoyland. Right. Uh, so it's Hoyland and Haaland. <laughs> that would be so difficult if they both joined. But there we go. We're champions, Dad. Gotta be happy with that. Let's see. How do we get on in the competitions? Oh, oh, I thought we, I thought we won a treble. I thought we won a treble. We were this well, we got close. We got semi-finals. We got semi-finals. Well, <sighs> PSG. Mate, we were what a awesome season. Team. Oh my god! Right, let's take a look at the Jesus. trophy that we did win. The first one that happened this year. Southampton. We beat Villa three-one. Happy days. At that point, we're thinking, oh, bonus, we've got yeah, our trophy that's, done. That's the first trophy of the season. Yeah, we, we hadn't won the league at that point. We hadn't done anything in the Champions no. League at that point. But we have won a trophy, which is fantastic stuff. Uh, but the FA Cup runners up to Arsenal. 1-0 oh, no. as well. That's one a tight game. Arsenal, I oh, that. I hate that. that. <laughs> um, Semi-final. Semi Oh, we were 1-0 oh. up in the first leg. 1-0 up against PSG. They went on and faced Milan in the final and won on penalties. Yeah. Oh. That's such a shame, isn't it? Uh, league face. Well. Oh my, we finished 21st. <laughs> All the way down in 21st. We lost four. Real Madrid, Roma, Bayern Munich and Feyenoord. Uh, how the hell did we get to the semis from that? Well so the knockout round, we beat Marseille, which I would hope we'll, after yeah, you know, we win the league, so, yeah. you'd think so. Yeah. Round of 16, we beat Newcastle. Ooh. We fit. Newcastle are not going to like us in this. And they beat us 2-1 in the first leg. We beat them 5-0 in the second. Not bad. Win your own games, mate. Quarter five, not that Bayern Munich. That's a big boy. That's a big, big team. That's, that's a big it. boy. We drew yeah. one all of them in the first leg. We beat them at Munich 2-1 to progress through. What a phenomenal season that is. 43 goals for Rasmus Hoyland. Makoko got 22. Endrick got 20 with 21 assists. Oh, he's looking good. Yeah. He's looking good. He's getting better and better. You boys are going to enjoy him. Uh, Yusuf and Makoko, 20 composure. Wow, okay. Right, but they got you, you've got some players on your squad now. Just got to keep hold of them because a few of them might be asking for new contracts. Sign them for new contracts. Get yeah, them nailed down. Yeah. Uh, your oldest player is James Ward Prowse at 32. After that, you've got a couple of players. Or Bednarak played quite a lot, to be fair, at 31. Other than that, you've got quite a very young team that you've got time with. You've got a five lot seasons of time. easily with yeah. a really good team. Easily. So I think I know what the target's going to be. You've got £75 million as well. Dad, what's the target going to be? It's going to be one target, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to win the Champions League. You've got to win the Champions League. Which I never thought we'd be saying in a Southampton <laughs> rebuild, but we've built an unbelievable I'm team sorry, here for I you. What else can I what else can I challenge you about? Yeah. We've won the league, we won the FA Cup, we won the Carabao Cup. Yeah. It can only be the Champions League after getting to the semi final. Yeah. So it's an hard challenge. Good luck. Win the Champions League for us. Absolutely. Right, Southampton fans. I would say, let me know what the food's like at the stadium, but I know. Yeah, I had a hot dog there. Yeah, it was yeah, good. Has it improved? Has it improved <laughs> yeah. in the last seven years, I think, was when I went there, uh, when Ricky Lambert was playing for you. Maybe even longer than Mate, that. Mate, just look at the bottom of that picture and see look at those trophies now. Look. Oh, yeah. It looks so much better Christmas now, doesn't it? Days. Two FA Cups, one Premier League trophy, and a Carabao Cup as well. Fantastic Brilliant. stuff. And we do well. We did do very well. I'll tell Thank you, what, you very much. Yeah, we deserve well that. done. Well yeah. done. Uh, we become Saints legends there yeah. easily. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your suggestions coming in in the comments. We absolutely love to see the comments. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you next week for another rebuild. Bye bye.